Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good to have you here. Fantastic. Looks like I am live. It's good to see you here. Cindy, Austin, Jan, Eric, what's up? Cody Bear in the house. We're going to dive into this Photoshop masterclass all about symmetrical artwork. Uh, I'm, I'm obviously going to show you the symmetry tool that most people are talking about, but um, at least that's the newest feature. So I'll review that and uh, some creative ways of using it. Daniel, good morning from Denver, Colorado. Same here, buddy. Isn't it nice that it's nice out today? So yeah, anyways, no snow. It's nice out. We could maybe go outside a little bit on a walk alone or something like that. But uh, other than that, I'm gonna stick at home and I'm thankful you guys are hanging out with me. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to my screen and uh, you can kind of see what I'm working on, just working with this this image. Uh, yeah, why not? I'm just gonna do a fun, I like to cover a topic, so i um, just going to do a fun symmetrical artwork using Frida Kahlo. So um, this technically isn't her, this came from Adobe Stock, but this is my inspiration for today. So it's basically Frida Friday, if that works for you. Cool. Uh, gonna be nice there in, in Green Valley. Wow, 95, awesome. Very cool. Okay, so uh, let's kind of dive into this. That's kind of the image I'm going to use. Um, I can add a fun background to this. And uh, in general, I'm going to switch over to my brush. And I'm just going to reset my brush right up here. All you need to do is just do reset tool. That'll reset it back to the initial uh, brush if you want. I've actually made some other brushes, uh, but I'm just going to start with a basic one just to keep this uh, pretty straightforward for the for, for the most part. Uh, next up, you can see right up here, so typically when I paint, of course, it's not symmetrical at this point. I'm just using a mouse. We're not going to get a lot of gradation in here. Uh, but right up here at the top, this is our symmetry tool. Just click on that little beautiful butterfly, right? Right. Yes. Good morning, maybe good afternoon, wherever the day may find you. Uh, I'm going to do dual axis accordingly, right? Um, and this is what people will typically... I can always make a new layer, so it's not restricted to the layer. But if you look in the... Be specific. So we could change colors. Right? Again, just making some simple design. Adding a little bit more to this, you get the Fooser? I don't know. I see the coffee there. Let's do that. Um, yeah, I'm, I hope the stream is okay. I, the Comcast has been doing work in the area. Ah, it's Comcast. Ugh. I apologize, everyone. Uh, that, um, I really can't change the uh, bandwidth once. Okay. Oh man. Oh, great. Like, like on, you're not watching any videos or anything, are you? All right. Okay, so I guess I'm just gonna continue um, and so going in here, I'm just gonna grab a butterfly. Let's grab a butterfly, let's bring that out. Yeah, if you wanna drop down, uh, what I'm gonna do now is just continue, okay? So, um, but you could also make your own. So that's what I'm doing. I'll go back to the dual axis. There's my dual axis, right? As I select a new layer, I have that path selected. Uh, selecting a new brush right in here, I can grab some of these fun ones. Let's take a look. Right? And I can start to create somewhat of a background and use these different brushes and we're gonna get that symmetry, right? Uh, but what I was just about to do is create my own brush. So coming in here, let's take this lovely butterfly, right? Select it and define brush preset right here. That's what we're going to do. Yeah, all right. Uh, butterfly two. That's what I'll call it. You can see it right down here. I've actually made two of them already. Uh, go back up here, deselect, and now I have 
this particular butterfly that I could start to play with, right? As I click, you can see it makes it on the other side, right? Because basically the short of it is like, since you can only use uh, brushes, create the brush that you want. In this case, I want to like add a butterfly here. And not only that, I can go into the different brush settings right in here. So let's do a little bit of scattering here for this brush and let's add a little bit of color dynamics for it as well. Um, we're gonna do a foreground, background, jitter. So it's gonna jitter between these two colors. We'll go purple or like hot pink and then we'll go like a teal, why not, right? And apply per tip. We can see how it changes. Let's delete all those, oops. Try this on a new layer. And uh, from here, I can actually control more of the shape dynamics if I want to. I can change the size, the angle, all that fun stuff. We start to see it down here. I'll scatter this a little bit more. It's gonna mean it's not gonna be as exact, but you can see I'm kind of creating uh, symmetry sort of out of this chaos, as you can see, right? Butterflies on both sides. All right, cool. Ah, so sorry, it is not. Uh, yeah. Bandwidth is not doing well. Even though it was, I did a test stream earlier and it did great for like an hour. Ugh. All right. Okay, so that's one thing I could add to this fun little background. I'm gonna do something actually what I think is like more impressive, to be honest with you. I'm gonna turn off symmetry, right? We'll just get rid of that symmetry path, like so. And let's create a new layer. And this time I'm gonna go to file. Uh, this is what I'm gonna do, this, rows and columns. I'm just gonna have two rows, so now I know the exact center. Okay, just like that. Okay, I can have a left side and a right side. Okay, so in this case, I'll just like fill this like so. And so I have this side, right? the left side, and I'm gonna turn this into a smart object. So this is gonna be left side. I'm gonna jump that, duplicate that layer like so, transform it, flip it, as you can see, horizontally and move it over here, right? Now we have right side. Sorry the stream is, uh, sorry the stream is, drop in and that is no fun. But now I have my left side and my right side that I can play with, right? They're both mirror, so whether I wanna paint or whatever, right? Yeah, I can paint in here. But really what I wanna do is I wanna add more to it. But we can see that this is working as I move this over. We can see those butterflies appear, okay? But what I wanna do is I wanna grab some new elements. So I'm gonna show you that we have these uh, starter templates or files that you can use. And I absolutely, but I actually wanna keep these as like full color images. But this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bring it over here, drop it right there uh, and start using some of, and it will locate that flower. I can also click option and I can zoom right to it. So I could bounce around to all of these elements just by holding down the option key. Right, so I might like this leaf. Oh, that one looks little elements right over here, as you can see. That one's okay, this one's okay. Another way of doing that is Command-0, zooming out. See, like so. There we go, right? I'm gonna try to bring this to life for us, and I'm sorry about the internet. Such is life. Comcast was doing work in the area this week. I live streamed for an hour earlier and I had zero issues. And then sure enough, when you go live, even though I was live earlier, yeah, you know, sometimes happens, right? Such is life. But it is free to Friday, at least on this stream. And I thank you so much for joining me. Jennifer Poole in the house. Eric Sue, what's up, Eric? In the house. Good to have you here, Eric. Um, uh, design career going, buddy. I know you're talking about you know, uh, giving away some free work, which I'm kind of torn on, right? I don't think you should really give anything away for free, but you know, um, do what you need to do, right? There we are. Just created just this fun layout. Like, yeah, just to go ahead and uh, lower the bandwidth. So sorry, I will zoom in more knowing that you're gonna do that. Um, but you can see it's updated this and this, we have a perfect symmetrical uh, look. 
So let's kind of do a little bit more right over here. Um, let's actually just jump into the custom. Kind of larger like so. Maybe we'll turn off the background and start work on working on these particular shapes. There we go. It's looking a little bit better. But again, just making the symmetrical design using our good friend Frida. And then I'm gonna add some text in here as well. Uh, yeah, she does need Frida brows. I need to bridge those in a little bit. I think you are right. All right, check this out. I'm gonna show you another little shortcut. As I'm making patterns, I'm gonna show you something else that I find pretty handy. Let me just change this. Yeah, we'll move this in a little bit like that. Let's do something like that. Okay, is that better? Let's get away from that crazy pink. We're gonna go more traditional. We'll dive into gradients in here. Maybe we'll add just like, make that a fun green and uh, shrink down all of these elements even more, right? So uh, as a designer, the reason I added this is this, this whole design, this needed a stabilizing element, right? That's what this needed. Um, so you can have a bunch of chaotic, uh, even though they're symmetri symmetrical, when you add symmetry to something, it really adds just like, it makes it look really peaceful and obviously like balanced. So it's just pretty straightforward. Um, but still all this content is kind of floating around. So uh, by adding this triangle, this kind of just gives it some weight or an area to kind of rest on. All right. That looks good so far. What do you think? Zoom out a little bit. There we go, here's the full design. And let's play with this some more because I actually want to put her inside of that uh, little triangle. So that's what I'll do right now. And I want to start creating some repeated elements. So. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's, that's interesting. All right. Scale her down like that. We'll put her inside. She's gonna kind of break out of this. Part of her head is gonna kind of break the border there like that, keeping her in the center. Uh, remember, um, if I hit Command H, I can bring up this guideline again. You could always change these guidelines as well, right? So we know we can do that because this is actually looking a little too light. So I'm actually gonna jump in and uh, take a look at these guidelines, there we go. There we are, here we are. I'm just gonna change this to black so it's gonna be easier to see, right? Uh, canvas is actually set to black, sure, why not? There we go. So that might be easier to see. She's kind of right down the center, almost, I'll move her over a little bit like that. So she's right there in the center. Let's mask her out, right? And work on some other elements. So, just like so. All right, how's everybody doing? Uh, I'm all... <laughs> yeah, exactly. All I'd say, Eric, for that, I just read your, your comment. Um, you know, it's just a fine line. You gotta really trust the person. If you're gonna give them away something for free, uh, people people really respect what they pay for. And if they don't pay for anything, I don't know if they're gonna respect the work you put into it. So that's the only risk you run, I'd say. Um, uh, yeah, so again, Eric, that's all I'd say. It's like, you know, you could, uh, people always have something. They can, they can buy you coffee or something like that they can they can they can kind of get you back. white filter by the way really fast uh, all it is is it's a adjustment layer I went to black and white right we can see how dark that looks let's go ahead and clip it to Frida which is right there right or pretend Frida she's not quite Frida yet boom there she is right we can start to play with 
some of these defaults. Cause already she looks a little dark. So right in here, we can just have a high contrast at a high contrast filter. We actually want more of a high contrast red, ready? Boom, there it is. Cause she had more red tones in her and that looks up a lot better. So all I did is crank up the reds and the yellows and the cyans. By the way, I would probably add say levels to this as well, just to her picture and adjust that contrast, uh, maybe a little bit more uh, kind of depending. She's a little washed out but just kind of cranking that up a little bit. So anyways, that's kind of what we're going for. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into these, right, at any time. Add to it, like I was doing before. Uh, I love these like cool feathers in here as well. Let's drop a couple more elements in really fast because I need a couple more things. All right, wait for it. Oh, you might be crazy. <laughs> Let's get these antlers in here. Oh yeah. Oh, we have all these gorgeous elements. Too many nice things, all from this watercolor brush set. Let's grab these, take these down like so. Shoop. Yeah, we had a big conversation about uh, working for free and all that stuff this week. Eric and myself and Voodoo Val, and it was really interesting. And I like hearing people's take on it. There we go, shrinking that down like so. Save, close. We'll see it here in a second. Let's in fact move this over. Like that. And now we have some action going on. Cool. All right. Uh, yeah, this is a great little watercolor collection. I absolutely love it. I'm thinking some of these elements will make a good wreath. See how these are, it's kind of a symmetrical circle, right? That I could also paint. So I might jump in and do some of that. But I also just like this as a whole. So I'm gonna grab this whole thing right here. like so and let's bring it into this design there it is let's give her a nice wreath and let's put this one inside of there oh yeah cool all right now we're getting somewhere uh there we go. This is uh, not bad so far. Actually needs a lot of work, to be honest with you. Um, I have a couple elements in here, like this crazy feather that snuck in. But even this, I have this element, and here's that wreath that I might want to use. So let's actually put this on top, like that. Maybe we'll put it part of her uh, hair like so. But let me get back to symmetry because there's more I want to do with an actual circle. Okay. So I want to have just a nice patterned circle around the whole thing as well. Again, I want that to be perfectly symmetrical as well. Let me just clean this up. Getting rid of this part right here. Why not? There we go. All right, and getting rid of these antlers. Thanks very much, so much for joining me, everyone. Uh, uh, yeah, charge for the work, then donate to a food bank. Ooh, I like that, Steve. That's a that's a good idea. Because again, people just don't, especially if people know that it's easy. Like people probably watch these streams and think, oh, this looks really easy. I, it's probably really cheap. No, it's like, this takes a lot of hard work. Anytime you see some amazing illustrator on here, it's like, yeah, when they created that, that took a lot of hard work. Uh, years of experience to know how to draw like a face or something. Um, and that's kind of what people need to understand. Okay, you guys get it. 
I know I had a problem with like s s like everybody else with like self worth when I went to art school. Actually, the first thing I ever sold, the first art piece I ever sold, I sold for it was a painting of uh, Elvis, the the king, as a uh, card. So it was a playing card, ki the king king of hearts, I, I think, and I painted like both sides. It was really cool. Is all I have to say. I don't even have a photo of it, but I sold it for like twenty two dollars, and it was like such a nice piece. And people are like, why did you sell that for $22? I'm like, I, I was like, I don't really know my worth. <laughs> All right, there we go. Okay, so let's get into that circle that I was talking about now that I have this squared away a little bit more. And I'm checking time. I have 30 minutes, so this is fantastic as well. So this is coming along a lot better. I like this. Yes, if it was easy, everyone would do it, right? <laughs> into it. All right, so uh, I will actually just turn off all those layers above and we'll just kind of start new. And in fact, I wonder if I should get a different brush. Uh, B for brush. We're gonna change this now to right up here. We know what these all these ones do. Wavy gets interesting. I think circle and spiral get interesting as well. So let's go into circle, right? Here's our circle. Whoops, sorry. Here's our lovely circle. Initially, you could resize it. I actually know I want it to be larger, so I'm gonna hold down the Option key and that will constrain it. And it's already constrained by default, at least with my settings. Holding down the Option key, I can stretch it out from the center, okay, like that. And I could actually turn on the other layers to see how this is gonna look compared to all the others, right? So just like that. So paths, there's my circle, right? With that path right up here, circle symmetry, I could select it again. So again, um, if you happen to want to resize it again, that's what I want to do. I'm going to kind of shrink it down like so, like that. And then we can get into painting. So I'm just going to select this nice green color. This is going to be really light, but now I can go in and choose my brush, okay? Um, I have some fun brushes in here. It looks like my internet connection is a lot better right now, by the way. Um, so happy about that. Okay, so I'm gonna create something fun. Where is it? I want a concept brush. Here we go, Kyle's concept brushes. Here's something to note about these brushes, because you'll jump in here and you think you can paint with everything, um, but you actually, technically you can't. So again, I'm in that same area. I'm gonna click through some of these. We can see, as I click on these, I, I can use this surface scratch with the symmetry tool. But as I click up, notice there's gonna be some mixer brushes that you actually cannot use the symmetry tool with. Just keep that in mind. Uh, I'll try to find one. I think it should be up here somewhere. Uh, one of these is actually just a mixer brush and it will actually turn it off. Come on now, where are you? I'll scroll clear up to the top. Ah, it's in here, here we go. Oh yeah, here we go, so this one. This is a mixer brush right over here. So it only works with the brush tool, not with any other tools as well, brushes. So let's grab the brush that I want, which I kind of want a, I kind of wanted some grass, but I think we'll just go with something really straightforward. So let's do that. Let's just go back to our hard round and make it a lot smaller. All right, so the stream is looking fantastic, by the way. I can even do a uh, speed test again really fast. Just so you know. Just so we can check to make sure it's not me, although it still could be. And now we can kind of come in and let's make this nice and tight, right? We're gonna make this so small, right? So teeny, and we'll make it a little bit brighter. Not to worry, I'm gonna change the color later anyway because I have an idea for this. Because I'm basically gonna put text in a bar around this as well. Kind of coming in, we can see, we can kind of create this fun fun pattern around the circle as I'm doing right here. Cool. I think symmetry, the symmetry brush pretty, makes, pretty much makes anyone look like a pretty good artist just by scribbling along the line, because that's all I'm doing. There's really no art to this at all, to be honest with you. There's nothing fancy going on here, right? There we have that one duplicating again on a new layer, right? Uh, we'll turn that off. Actually, we'll select a different color, right? So we have that green, and then we're gonna have a pink in with it. So just adding two colors like so, and just kind of playing with this design. 
cool. Let's get a little more crazy. Let's try this again. Oh yeah, thanks. I'm glad you think it looks cool. It takes needs uh, a lot more work. And again, it's hard producing something really awesome in an hour, but that is always my goal as part of this masterclass. And if you're just joining me again, I'm using the symmetry brush, which is brand new right up here. I'm just using the circle uh, radio brush, uh, circle symmetry brush, as you can see right there. I'm gonna jump in, grab a circle, right? We of course want this to be perfectly in the center, right? If we want to, we can go up, we can go back up to uh, view, go into our uh, guide layout and turn on rows so we can have um, <clears throat> two columns and two rows. No gutter, make sure there's nothing in there. And you can see it'll go ahead and slice those lines like so, okay? Gives me the exact center right there, okay? Anyway, let's jump in, draw out our circle like that. I'm gonna do two circles. I'm gonna do one like this. Do another one. Command J to jump that layer. Command T, option. Drag it out. This second one, trust me, it's gonna be darker like that. There we go. All right. I'm glad you like it. I, I, don't worry, it, it, this actually still needs a lot of work, but I'm gonna go ahead and <clears throat> do a little bit of masking here. There we go. That was a long about way of just kind of getting a circle around the edge, okay? So uh, I kind of want to put some things in there as well. So I have this, I have these uh, fun lines that I created that I can now put inside of this ellipse. And let's just uh, do this. Rasterize layer, let's just apply this layer mask. This is basically my circle. And now we have these fun ellipses that you could hardly see, these little patterns on the inside that I just put in there really fast. Um, maybe I will invert that color. Let's get some text in here. I like this. This is what I'm gonna do, you ready for this? Uh, feet, uh, this should be Y. Feet, why do I need you for when I have wings to fly? So I don't know how to say this in Spanish, but I'm gonna also add the Spanish version as well, okay? We're gonna do this right along the path. So we still have this circle right here, right? Taking just the text tool. And just to keep it simple, I'm gonna just turn off everything else, right? We have this circle, I'll hide that guide. And notice when I select the text tool, and let me just change this to white, uh, with the text tool, if I roll over it, look, oh, it turns into uh, text along a path. So now I can click, there it is, and I can paste in that text right here that I copied. Okay, so that's what I've done. I hope I've done that. <laughs> Let's get rid of that. The fun part is, is my text is actually white on white. So that's why you didn't see anything, right? It is actually there. Boom, there it is, right? Here's my text along a path, right? Bringing that out a little bit. Let's make this larger. There we go. Let's make this look a lot more clean by going to the properties for this text and making it all caps. Boom, there you are. And let's actually make this a sans serif because this is gonna be a little cleaner. Uh, no, I might make it a uh, serif. Right on. Okay, so I still wanna get into some more symmetry things and just some easy ways to, to duplicate items um, as well. So I wanna get into that, but let me jump over. We're gonna change this back to serif. In fact, I'm just gonna roll over some of these. Uh, this Caslon Pro, just gonna keep it simple. We're going really classic, essentially, and hopefully you can see that text right there, right? Text along a path, that's done. I might need to make it, um, I might need to make it white, I don't know. Let's turn on everything else, right? There we go, there's our text. Bringing that up, and again, we can have that 
right at the top if we want to as well. Uh, I'm gonna have two sides to this, so wait, wait for it. Duplicating this layer, right? Let's grab this other text in here, right? And we're gonna have the Spanish version as well, right? So this is what she actually said. Forgive my horrible, or that translation. We're gonna put one on one side and one on the other side. Like that, cool, got it? Something like that, cool, all right. We got that going on. Uh, kind of need some work. These lines are way too thick. This just needs more variation as well. I could actually jump in and add a gradient to it, right? I'd probably jump in and change it up a little bit like that because it's just too strong right now. Okay, so let's get into some more uh, fun things because what I want to do now, um, there is a potential that you want to do a step and repeat which is, again is along the lines of symmetry. We wanna go ahead and duplicate something. We could do that all the time in Illustrator. You guys are used to doing this in Illustrator. Right, let's just uh, release this. Uh, release, taking this one line, just so you can kind of see what I'm doing right in here. We do this all the time in Illustrator. Like we can duplicate this by just Option, Shift, and Drag, right? And then Command D. It's like, I want that same functionality in, in Photoshop. And you actually do have that same functionality. So I'm gonna come in here. I'll paste this in really fast. Just as some pixels, why not? Stretch this out. There we go. Bring this up here. We're just gonna make sort of a nice, a nice little pattern. In fact, Oh, I want to just do a step and repeat right in here. Uh, shift, oh, excuse me, Option, Command, T, right? If you do Option, Command, T, you're going to be able to transform that specific shape, okay? So you're going to do Option, Command, T, and then you'll move it, right? And then hit Enter. Now hold Shift, Option, Command, T. I know it's a lot, but now I'm duplicating that selected element, right? Just like that, all the way down. Let's take a look, where is it? It's still going all the way down to the bottom, right? Again, but she didn't know you could do a step and repeat in Photoshop. So again, that's why this is a master class, and I wanna thank you guys for hanging out with me, right? There it is. Going clear down to the bottom. There it is, fantastic, oops. Right, looks great. And you can always, oops, hold on. Uh, you know, duplicate the layer, I'll move this over, Command T, flip it. There we go. I'm just making a pattern in the background. Again, just keeping this nice and symmetri symmetrical like that. And what I'll do next is throw a nice gradient on that as well, okay? Bam, there we go. Just added some texture to the background. How's everybody doing? Uh, all right, this is new to me and very useful. Ah, uh, that's why we do this, Sig, hang out. Hang out with me. Yeah, we could work on the unibrow. Actually, what she needs, she needs more contrast for sure. So I'll just go back into levels. Again, I'm sorry, this is it's like somewhat symmetrical. And you know what we're missing here? We're missing a huge thing. Because what does it say here? Uh, feet, why do I need you when I have wings to fly? We need to grab some wings. So let's do that right now. Luckily, I think in my library panel, I got a wing. Oh yeah. Uh, dropping that in like so, something like this, right? Like that, okay? Let's go ahead and do a little puppet warp on this because I feel like I need to stretch this out a little bit. So puppet warp, there it is, gives me 
these little pins that I can add, because what I want to do is I just want to kind of grab this part right down here and pull it in. I just need to stretch it out a little bit more like so, right? That looks good. Command J, Command T, flip horizontal, boom, there it is. Let's bring this to the other side uh, like that. And guess what? I want them to be black and white, just like she is black and white. That's kind of what I'm thinking, right? What do you think? Right? Oh, I'm so glad she's your favorite artist. She's, she is pretty amazing. All right, so right over here, taking all of these, guess what? I have Frida right here. Frida. Um, but really, I want these levels, or excuse me, these adjustment layers to be applied to all these elements. So I can select all of these, Command G to group them, right? So let's just call this Frida now with wings. Right? And again, let's move these outside of it and now just clip it to that particular uh, layer group like that. Okay, just like that. That seems to work out pretty well, but there's, there's also more that needs to happen. I might even need to kind of, I need to definitely play with the depth of all of this. This is really exciting. You ready for this? This is, this is huge being able to do this. I still might change this. I'm not, the wings are too strong right now. Um, I almost need to add its own. Uh, this is do this is do this. There we go. I'm just brightening up those wings like that. Cool. Clip, clip. There you go. This is what happens in a master class. You have layer groups that have clipping masks on them, and in that layer group, you also have some more uh, clipping masks for those adjustment layers. But now I need to have some depth in there, right? So these are still a little strong. I might change them later on, right? Uh, but I wanna change some depth. So what's really cool is like once I've decided that, you know what, the symmetry looks pretty good, and let me actually jump right in here really fast because I do want to move out and add a couple more things right in here. But I could also ungroup these at any time that I want. So um, same thing, Command J, Command T, let's flip this around, right? Get some more fun flowers going right over here. Move that, flip it horizontal. I don't know, something like that. Command J. Saving it, and now we can see it over here on this side. So now I'm starting to get an idea for how this looks. And in some cases, a lot of this stuff needs to be much smaller. Command J, there it is. Like that. <sighs> All right. Shrinking this down. Uh, bring the pink circle forward. You're exactly right, Mia. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, and the way to do that is I need to ungroup this. But first, I'm making this look like a little bit more, uh, a little bit more balanced, or just I'm adding more to the background is all I'm doing. Again, working on the right side, and then seeing the result on the left side. And checking the time, 10 minutes. Uh, maybe a little blur on the wings. Definitely like the, the wings have too much contrast right now. I know it, I know it. That's for sure, right? In fact, they could just use like a little bit of, uh, a little bit of, uh, a little less contrast actually. That's what this needs. Let's go back into properties. So we're gonna focus on this wing right here. And less, oop. yeah, less contrast. And in fact, I feel like even throwing a black and white in there as well. All right, uh, you ready for this? I would typically never do this, but let's try it anyways. Boom, 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 take that down. There we go. That's what I needed. Guess what? I just threw a, a layer of white over the wing, and that's actually kind of what I want. So, 
Something I would never usually do, but you know what? It works, so I'm happy with it. All right, so we have that done. We need to work on the layering. I'd say all these flowers look pretty good. Let's move them out a little bit. Let's save this. All right, we're starting to get more of a design going. All right, that is done. Guess what? I'm gonna actually ungroup this now, okay? I can always keep um, a, boop. I can always keep one as a backup. So I can take this left side, Command J. This could be just my backup. But this is actually a new feature that we've added in Photoshop. If you right click, guess what? Even though it was once a smart object, we can now convert it back to layers. Boom, done. It's no longer linked. And now I have access to all that content and, um, and I can start to move them around and, and, and whatever, right? So that is I think what I wanna do. Okay, let's do that. Why not convert to layers? Okay, boom. Uh, flip horizontal. Okay, why not? We are learning things. Holy cow. All right. Give me one second. Flipping this, there we go. And flip horizontal. All right, cool. Uh, you like the contrast between the, yeah, that's that's the whole goal is uh, just to keep this, I don't know, kind of, uh, not to over design it, right? So thank you, Ashi. Uh, yeah, so we need to have these wings. These wings can go in and out. And I don't know who said it, maybe it was Steve, uh, but that's what I'd like to do now. And this is again, not gonna be easy. Like I have, I have these lines back here, lines. I have all these other elements that I've created, right? That we can add, but really it's all about sort of showing a little bit of constraint at this point. Um, but since I have these elements, let's take all this, let's group them together. And now we have our circle like that. Command J to jump it, make two of them. And uh, yeah, we can put this on top of this other stuff, including on top of everything, right? Oops, did I accidentally throw the circle or the lines in there? Yep. Okay. Ah, there we go. Bam. Ooh, that looked good too. Oh, we're gonna have so much fun playing with the background as well. All right, so um, I just duplicated this and we'll create this like circle sandwich. So I can put this one on top. I actually don't want it everywhere. So it's just a matter of controlling or finding out where I wanna actually have this end up. Um, I might want it underneath the wings. I kind of like that, but we're gonna start playing with a lot of that in and out at this point, right? Shall we? Oh yeah, this is welcome to my world of complexity. Uh, why am I? Do you ever have days where you're just like, you forget entirely? Ah, oh, this is fascinating. Just because this has a clipping mask on it, you actually can't select uh, merge layers. You actually have to uh, turn off that clipping mask and then you can merge layers. I just found that out, okay? Cool. All right. Ready for this? Wait for it. Putting this on top of everything. And then adding a mask and chopping out part of it. Like this. 
There you go, perfect, there we go, we did it. We did it, look at that. So, uh, what I essentially did is I wanted this triangle to be in front of everything else. I just put it on top and then masked out the top part. So only this part right here is showing. So hopefully you can see that. This is the part that I just put on top of everything because I wanted it to just kind of be above that stuff. And that looks pretty cool. And the great thing is like all this stuff, these are individual elements that I could always change and move around. I would probably want to have some uh, asymmetry with my symmetry. Uh, this whole canvas needs to be changed. I personally don't think the lines are working that well in the background, but it might need some texture. At this point, I would just do like a ton of playing around with this. Like, again, um, these lines might not be working. Let's actually take this off entirely. See how much this changes the design just by changing that background color for sure, right? Uh, again, we were able to create this pretty fast and uh, I'd say I'm pretty happy. Come on, there we go, and it's back. <laughs> my, my computer's like, yeah, it's done, Paul. That's why I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn off the mouse so you don't mess with it anymore, right? But I think you just need something subtle like that in the background. Cool, more to play with here. I'll spend more time on it. I think uh, she needs to have definitely more of a pop of color in here if we're talking design wise. You know, crank up the saturation, right? Of her like headdress there. And uh, I'd have some more fun with the, the flowers and everything. But thanks so much everybody for hanging out with me. Ooh, I still have five minutes. Um, and again, in this, in this case, I would dive in and say, hey, you know what? Let's kind of move this out. An opening bracket takes things. Again, holding down the command key, we'll select that object because I want to bring in these flowers, which are awesome. Some of these elements breaking the circle in this case and uh, kind of extending out. If you have questions, I'm going to look up in a second. Oh, let's get some, some of those grapes down there or something like that. Ah, uh, cool. I'm glad you like it. Steve likes it. If Steve likes it, then I am happy. Again, it's just a matter of playing with these little elements right in here. Right? Okay. Ah, uh, ah, Carol, you're speaking my language. Ah, you know it. Don't tell me that. Is that all? Oh, I don't know if that's like too morbid or not, but we can kind of sneak a, cause you're right. It does start to look like very day of the dead-ish. Thoughts? All right, blend it in. Crank up my brush size. You know, let's shift, shift it to old softy. Crank up the flow. And again, I can, we could do half of it. X will flip the colors. X, let's flip them again. Maybe we just don't want that nose part. Uh, but do we do something like that? I don't know. I don't know, just a thought. Uh, anyways, just a thought, worthy of a try since I had a couple extra minutes. Um, let's take a look right down here at the fun schedule. Jason Levin, that's how you say his last name is Jason Levin. Just kidding, Jason Levin's up next. Oh, how to understand noise and audio. Ah, into it. Uh, part of the problem with noise and audio is just, you're just listening to horrible bands. <laughs> that's the big problem. <laughs> just start, stop listening to horrible music and then, uh, you know, that kind of relieves a lot of the, the noise. <laughs> All right. All right, just her face looks good. Jason Livin, yeah, I like that too. Her face is beautiful. We're gonna leave it alone. Usually, as you know me as well, last thing I'll also try is I'll try some color lookups right in here. It's an adjustment layer, color lookup. 
probably know my favorite one, is the two strip look. I know in this case, I was very exact with the colors, so I don't think this is really gonna help out a lot, but I do like to try this, right? Two strip look gives it pink and teal. I've kind of already used those colors, so we're fine there. Uh, but I will usually kind of jump in here and say, hey, what, what will uh, Chris Winter look like? And just eat any one of these and see if it adds anything. In this case, yeah, not so much. That one's not bad. Let's get rid of that symmetry path. That's not bad. So anyways, I will uh, get this all squared away and uh, post it to Instagram. So um, yeah, make sure you follow me on Instagram. I would love to get your feedback. Is there a 60S LUT? Um, just because I don't have it doesn't mean it's not out there, that's for sure. Um, but there's, there's me pointing at all my social media. I just made that the other day for fun. <laughs> get away, move, move away, Mr. Paul. What are you doing? But that's where you can kind of track me down. Uh, here's different Fujis, Kodaks, stuff like that. You could always even make your own if you want to. Uh, but that's kind of where I'm gonna, um, I guess leave it, because that's my time, folks. Thanks so much for watching. Jason Levine up next. Thank you so much, everyone, and we will see you soon. Thanks, everyone.